Okay, so we're going to start off in GIF making by trying to get some actual frames, some pictures that we're then going to turn into an animation. So I laughingly do a lot of my drawing in PowerPoint. I could use GIMP or other software, but I kind of like PowerPoint because it gives me the ability to, uh, to pick things up and drag them around. So I'm going to start off with a circle and then remove the fill coloring there. Because I'm just going to make a clock is my plan, and so I'm going to start off with a circle. If you hold down shift, you can keep it as an actual complete circle. I'm going to thicken up the line there for the hands. So the first one will be the minute hand, then I'll do the hour hand. And I use a lot of the shortcuts with the Alt-R and so forth. And so I rotated that one by 90 degrees to the left or right, I don't remember right offhand. But uh, I put that down in position. And this can be my first frame. Now, what I'm going to do, because I'm going to have to move around and do a number of different frames, and I want them to overlap so that I can get them to make a nice, clean animation, I'm going to add the grid onto the back so that I can try and get this lined up, and it's going to take just a minute or so. But I'm going to get it lined up so that as I move things around, I know that stuff is more or less centered. It's just a small thing to add in so that my hands don't kind of go all over the place. You don't have to do anything this elaborate or anything like that, but it can be nice if you're going to do this for a professional setting to try and make certain that you've got everything looking good. On top of that, you don't have to draw your own file or your own images to make the frames for an anim animation. You can take pre-existing images or anything like that. Now I've taken everything that I've drawn, I'm grouping it up here, and then I right-click and save as. I'm actually just going to save this as an image file. I think I go with PNG. And so it'll come up as an enhanced Windows file, something like that, by default. Not a lot of things can use that, so I don't usually stick with that. So now I ungroup everything, and I've sped up the video at this point, and it's just me going through and making all the other frames and saving them in the same fashion that you've seen the first one done. Okay, so now we've got our frames. I've got my uh, folder here where I saved the frames and the screen capture that I did before. I've got another screen capture set up. And let's begin making our GIF. So I'm going to start with one of my frames, and I'm going to right-click and edit with GIMP. I'm going to take a moment while that loads up. Okay, there we go. And I've already squished my windows into my record area here. So, I have my first frame. And so this is the beginning of the clock. Now what I want to do is I want to import one of the next frames. So I'm going to go to File, right over here, uh, Open as Layers. I'm going to do Frame 2, and then Open. And you'll see here in our layers, we've got more than one. I can see the new one where now it's pointing at 315 effectively. And I can click this I it'll make this one invisible so that I can see the one beneath it, just in what I'm playing with now. I can also adjust the opacity of it to actually save it where one of the layers isn't as opaque, so it's partially transparent. But for now, we're not really doing anything with that. Uh, I want to open as layers. I'm going to go ahead and do three and four. I'm going to open both of those, and we can see I've got the 345 here, the 330, the 315, and the 3 o'clock. And again, I was too lazy to move the hour hand. Right now, we see the we normally see the one that's highest on there, so the one that's on top, I can make it go invisible. And so this is it going backwards, and everything's invisible. When you see this checkerboard pattern, it means that that is clear. So I'm going to bring these back up. Okay, so I've got all of these layers, and Honestly, I'm pretty much done. Let's check it out. So I'm going to go to uh, Filters, Animation, and Playback. Drag this down here where we can see it, and we can actually see this guy. This is him on constant loop. He's kind of flying, though. That's, that's not great. Um, so I'm going to stop it there. That really makes it look like time is just flying, which is awesome, but kind of misses the point that I want. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to rename these. 
I'm going to leave them more or less as they are named, but I'm going to put in parentheses 300 ms. There. What this is doing is it's setting up an order in the system that I want this frame to show up for 300. Oops. 300 milliseconds. So anything that's in the parentheses there tells it how long you want it to stay. And you can also control this in a different way elsewhere too. But let's see if that has adjusted it in my animation. Playback. There we go. Now that's slowed it down and that is a bit more what I'm looking for. Okay, so it looks like we've got our GIF pretty much playing ball the way that I want it to, so I'm going to go to filters. One of the things you can do is optimize for GIF. I don't remember exactly what it does, but sometimes it makes things work a little better, so let's see. You don't have to do it. It's up to you. I didn't have things perfectly lined up in there, but again, this is just kind of playing around with stuff to give you an idea with importing all the different things. So this guy looks pretty good, so I'm going to do save as. And I'm going to name him uh, 2013 clock. Make certain that we can see it here. Select by file type extension. In this case, I'm going to go down to GIF image. I could have easily just put dot GIF, and that would have worked too. But sometimes it's nice to actually do the drop down and make certain that you're getting what you want then I'm going to click save, and a box comes up. Now this is kind of important. The GIF can handle the layers, but it's asking you how you want to use it. Either merge them, which is normally what you do if you want a PNG, but we actually want an animation. That's what we're going for here. So I'm going to go with animation. Uh, the other one should be fine, and I'm going to do export. And then I usually leave the created with GIMP, and then add just a tag in there. Now here's where you can select if you want it to play once and stop, or if it's just set up to constantly loop. And so if it's something where you want it to only play through the animation once, maybe it's an introduction or something, the first time you load a web page, or you're going to use it in a PowerPoint presentation, you only want it to play once, then uncheck this box. However, I want the clock to keep going, so I'm going to do loop forever delay between frames where unspecified, so if I didn't put in those uh, parentheses with the 300 milliseconds, then here is where I could change all of them to 300 milliseconds. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that now. And I can make that override what I've written in these by selecting this box. Use delay entered above for all frames. So I could go in and easily reshape it. I could make the clock go slower by changing it to 600 milliseconds, or a second each, or whatever. Um, but I'm just going to leave what I had built into it. Same thing at this point. Frame disposal. I'm going to go with... Uh, actually, I'm going to leave it with I don't care, because I, I can see from the layers here, when I did optimize for GIF, it did a couple of things to the layers themselves, so I'm not certain what's going on on that. But you can do cumulative, where it basically continually just puts one layer on top of the others. It doesn't delete any of the first ones. So if you've got any parts that are clear or don't block a, a part of the image underneath it, then you'll still be able to see it. That shouldn't be an issue with mine, because all of mine are the clocks that are the same size, so they should overlap each other. And then you can also select one frame per layer, where basically it'll show the first frame, then remove everything from that frame and put the second frame up, so you'll never see anything underneath it. Um, I'm going to leave... Uh, I don't care, and let's see what we come up with. So I'm going to do that. Save. And give it a moment. Okay. I'm going to bring back up this. And where's my GIF? There. This should be it. Let's see if it's playing ball. There we go. And it appears to be doing so. Although I didn't get the uh, clear background, I don't think, but that should be good enough. Anyway, that gives you an idea on playing around with some basic GIFs.